everybody. How you doing? Welcome to a brand spanking new edition of the Bid Nerds. Your daily Bitch. nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick. I'm your host, coming to you from the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas, along with my partner Michael Deeb, coming to you from San Francisco. How you doing, Michael What's Deeb? What's up, JP? Hey, what do you think of all the people out there who are disappointing our producer, Patootie? Oh, this no. is our producer. Crying. She produces the show, and How she's got sad that? face right now because you haven't <laughs> hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. She is sad because you haven't spread the word and shared the nerd. That's what you need to do. Don't disappoint Patootie. Share the nerds right now by hitting subscribe, like, and the notification button so you are aware of the most recent nerds available. Fresh nerds. Fresh nerds. You don't want stale, dirty, stagnant, old, spunky nerds. No good. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went there. Uh, okay, for the new people that are, uh, that are new to the show, what we do here is we, we dig through all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. We find the most interesting car of the day. We have a conversation about it. Um, we will tell you whether it's a good car, bad car, or otherwise. We will make a prediction as to what will happen at the end of that car's auction. And then we will jump in a time machine and go into the future and show you what actually happens at the end of the auction. We will show you uh, what happens and go over those results right here so uh let's get to the car because that's the, the cars are really why everyone comes in let's go right to it today's car is pretty interesting what do we got here today michael deep all right so Jeep, what we're looking at is a 1987 w m6 with just 32,000 miles offered out of costa mesa california and it is on bridge trailer Oh, I pick a car because I know it's clean. I know it's nice. I know it's a car that people like and less after. But occasionally, I'll, I'll, even I'll pick one where I'm like, you just have no idea what's going to happen here. So what we're looking at is a car that's closing very soon. And the big question is, is this now a six-figure, $100,000 car? According to some of the data, a few of these cars with even less miles than this one have really broken the bank. We've seen some of these cars bring $150,000 or more, but I would contest that some of those cars were cars that were essentially unused cars with under 20,000 miles on the odometer or, or even less, maybe a car with like, you know, seven or 8,000 miles uh, could certainly be a hundred and forty five or a hundred and seventy five thousand dollar car. But this car with 32,000 miles strikes that really interesting balance between it's clearly a car that's been owned and enjoyed and pampered, but obviously has been driven. It's not a car that's just sat in the garage. It's got 32,000 miles on it. Um, really beautiful car. And so I'm really uh, struggling to figure out what the true value is going to be. Let's remind everybody that the M6 is this fantastic car that BMW Motorsport made. It's actually one of the first m cars, if not the first brand car brought to the United States. The E24 platform has an inline six that basically utilizes um, IFBs, uh, individual throttle bodies. Uh, and you're looking at something with like 256 horsepower and 243 pound foot of torque. Now, that doesn't sound like a ton of power, but you got to remember back in 1987, even this luxurious all the buttons and gizmos car still probably weighed 2,600 pounds. It's got a five speed manual that's fun to shift. Uh, it's got a limited slip differential, and these cars came with a, a rear self-leveling suspension. Now, that system was removed, uh, and somebody put on um, aftermarket springs and shocks, um, which is stunning because, JP, when you go back and look at the picture, the car doesn't look like it's lowered. Um, the car has also been treated to a larger front anti-roll bar. So I would imagine this car handles pretty good, but I'd, I'd contest that JP and I would like our M6 on aftermarket suspension to sit a little lower than this car does. By all accounts, um, the original equipment is included in the sale, and this car probably handles better than it did when it was new. So a beautiful example. It's on the right platform. It's got the right mileage. If you love red and tan, you're probably losing your mind to a car but just this nice that often. But the big question, the $100,000 question, JP, is where this car is going to land. And I have to tell you, 
um, you know, as fun as fun and as long as we do the show, this one really stumped me because it. I could see this car going for eighty five thousand, eighty seven thousand dollars. I could also see this car bring in over one hundred and thirty. It's going to be tough to figure that one out, but I'll send it to you. I know we've covered a few M sixes. Clearly, a soft spot for me because I love the car. What do you think? They are beautiful cars. Always wanted one, uh, but I've never owned one. I've spent some time driving them. They do drive way better than they look like they would for a, you know it's a big uh-huh. kind of gt car this is a great car to soak up miles on the freeway uh but if you do happen upon a twisty road you won't be disappointed uh if they're really tight technical turns and corners it's the car is a bit too big for that uh in my opinion yeah. but um you know maybe with the right suspension that could be changed um it's just beautiful what a beautiful, beautiful thing to behold. Here's a little crappy driving video that the, uh, that the seller uh, put on the site. I, I got to tell you, if you're going to do a driving video, find an open road, man. Don't just don't drive through traffic. That's just the worst. Uh, and you got to wonder, yeah. you know, be safe, too. Some of these people, you know, they're holding their phone uh, and driving around uh, with their manual car. And it's just like, that, guy, come on. That you- that you used don't have to be any friends that can't <laughs> yeah, go right? with you for a ride. Isn't that the reason you buy a car like this when you're, you're like, oh, I get this cool car. I'm going to have all these cool friends. Uh, apparently, that's not the case because people get these cool cars <laughs> and they have no friends because they don't have anybody to sit in the second seat and hold this yeah. stupid phone uh, while they drive around a little bit. No, I, this, is, this is a beautiful car. Um, but I'm with you on, on where this is going to end up. I mean, the miles are pretty low or very low, really, for the year. Um, but it's not collector miles looking at that interior it's really immaculate i mean for a it light is. color like that to not yeah. just be covered with coffee stains and grossness that dark kind of mocha dash offset with the light tan rest of the interior oh, it's just just a it's just a <laughs> place you want to hang out and be in i mean this is the kind of car where you're like uh, I, I need an excuse for a road trip. Uh, let's go get a cup of coffee in a, in the next state over or something like that, just to drive around and, oh man. And this car with the pictures on the beach, they're not beautiful, gorgeous pictures, uh, but they're kind of romantic. They're, they're kind of not only the yeah. place that you, this is not only a car that you want to be in. That's the kind of place that you want to be in when you're in this car, driving up a coast somewhere, uh, just right. looking good and chilling. Um, yeah. So yeah, man, what do you what do you think's gonna happen at the end of the auction? Where do you think this thing's gonna land? So JP, I, I'm really I'm trying to play the politician here on this one because I I, I, I every time I look at the car, I keep thinking eighty seven thousand dollars, eighty eight thousand um, dollars. But there's evidence that this car is should be worth a lot more, and and I, I just don't know where that's at. The other thing that's very confusing is our car closes in a day, and it's just sitting at like uh, thirty seven thousand dollars on seventeen bits. So. Um, I'm going to kind of try to play both sides here. I'm just going to go $95,000. But it's interesting, you know, at 95 grand, if this, if this is an informed seller and he knows that this car should bring over that 95, it could hit 95 and stall out and be a failure to sell. Um, That wouldn't surprise me. That would tell me that the owners, um, you know, maybe not greedy, but educated because this car theoretically could bring 120, 130. I'm I'm just not feeling it. Red hand with a, Boca dash. Uh, maybe it was black on black or some other weird color. But ninety-five grand and I'm I'm really middle of the road. I'm really conflicted on this one. What do you think, Jim? John P. JP. John. I, I, I have been so wrong when it comes to M sixes over and over in past episodes when we've talked about these. I have a hard time thinking of this car as being worth anywhere even close to that. For me, this right. this car bringing fifty thousand dollars just seems patently ridiculous. Um, the driving experience is not a hundred thousand dollar driving experience. It's just no. not. Um, it's it's no it's no R eight Spider, is it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he digs the knife in. Uh, look, but it's not. I mean, that's true, right? Okay. But that's not yeah. an apples to a- apples comparison. No, I mean, no. is this a modern no. supercar? Of course not. Um, but if you're looking at a classic car and spending a hundred thousand dollars i mean being in a car from the 80s i could see spending this kind of money on a 911 of the era of some sort or 930 or whatever uh because those cars represent you know the top of the driving experience but this car i i just i don't know you know i i you know what to I, appreciate these as much as maybe i should i don't dislike yeah, you, them i just don't 
I, I, I know you haven't given us a bid, so we'll come right back to you. But what's interesting is maybe this car suffers from living in the shadow of the M5 that came the year later. The 1988 M5 only came in one colorway. It was black with tan, you know, four door, um, the same basic motor and drivetrain. But, uh, you know, does the M6 suffer from being in the shadow of the car that, for whatever reason, the sedan was the icon of BMW's motorsport division? And this car was just like a hopped up version of their already well-selling luxury car, the 635 CSI uh, or the L6 that came later, which had like an automatic transmission and maybe a few more buttons but um i i do think that the m5 kind of overshadows this car and if this car had thirty two thousand miles and was an m5 in this condition jp we're talking about a hundred eighty thousand dollar car which is unbelievable um so anyway that's just another take that came to me yeah i mean i certainly believe, agree with you that the m5 is the car that gets more attention i think this is way prettier way nicer absolutely than the five and even yeah. the m5 i have the same problem with an m5 i mean here's the thing yeah. bmws of this era have always to me being my age represented the car that you settle with because you couldn't afford the more expensive thing Right. You know, when yeah. when you're young, you know, you want to you want a fun sports car, you get a Volkswagen. Uh, then uh, when you can afford it, you bump up to a BMW of some sort. And then when you really have arrived, you start getting Porsches. Um, yeah. So, you know, this car <laughs> adding to a collection makes sense, but I don't see this car as being I just don't see people clamoring, you know, to get one of these or at least. I shouldn't say that. I don't understand why they would. I think people yeah. do, uh, but I certainly just, maybe it's my age, maybe it's the era that I come from. Um, just an absolutely wonderful, beautiful car, but I just don't understand why they bring in so much money. I just don't think they're worth it. Uh, your number was what? 95,000. 95,000. I'm going to park like, under you and I'm going to say 85,000. I just, I, all right. and that's just, I, I think that this is also a car that's going to get hurt with the changing dynamics going on in the market. Um, I okay. just don't think this thing is going to be something as strong. John, can I add to your timeline for the audience? Because we, we tend to educate people. So, sure. you know, young guy gets a Volkswagen and then he gets a, a respectable job. He's kind of finished with school and he can afford a BMW. And then when he's arrived, he gets a Porsche. What age or roughly when does the guy kind of have that midlife crisis where he goes out and buys like a brightly colored Audi convertible? I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. When he moves to downtown Las Vegas. Oh, uh, and he wants snap. To be a DJ. <laughs> Uh, at Akasa, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. nice move. Uh, nice move. Uh, <laughs> All right. All right. Let's well, see what happens. Uh, let's find out what happens with this car. Uh, let's. We're going to jump in the time machine. We're going to jump in our yeah. DeLorean, and we're going to go back to the future and see how much this car sells for right after this. Okay, guys, I want to tell you about Vegas Auto Fest. The drivers are coming. This is one of our big sponsors. It's the biggest car show of the year in Las Vegas. It's one of the coolest car shows you can possibly experience anywhere. If you haven't made plans to be part of Vegas Auto Fest on September 17th, then do it now. Go to VegasAutoFest.com and register your car. You think you're a car enthusiast? Doesn't matter where you live. Plan a trip to Vegas on September 17th and come out and see this show. It's like Monterey Car Week all in a day. Have you ever been to the Quail? Have you ever been to Works Reunion? Have you ever been to Amelia Island? All those car shows are amazing and great. Have you been to Luftkult? Sure, but Vegas Auto Fest is something special. Make a plan for September 17th. We'll see you in Vegas. Welcome back, nerds. You're watching Bid Nerds. Your most interesting car of the day is here. We have the results of the most interesting car of the day's auction. Uh, and Michael Deeb, what happened with this BMW M6? Oops. Can I say oops? Is oops a, a, a quality take on one of these cars? Sure. Sometimes, JP, I get so excited by what I see. Uh, I'm a sucker for a sexy girl, you know what I mean? Like, 
Here's this 1987 BMW M6 on Bring a Trailer with just 32,000 original miles, and it's in California. And I just, I, 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 I just got too ethered up on it. So I went really high and really deep. I said $95,000 was going to be the winning bid to bring it home. Um, you pragmatically parked your bid 10 grand underneath me at $85,000. When we were looking at the car early in the week, it was only at $37,000. It did make it up to $72,500 where it sold on a respectable, a whopping 49 bids on Bring a Trailer. Um, so anyway, like I said, oops, I just, I, man, I, I outkicked my coverage once again and, uh, and you won just by default. Um, ironically, this car was more than $10,000 underneath you. Um, the question I have, and I have no way to quantify this answer, the way Sloan and Canapa set the Porsche market for the best examples of rare cars in the marketplace, a gentleman, a really nice guy named Eric Keller has a place in Cincinnati called Enthusiast Auto Group, and all he does is sell BMW M. That's his thing. He is the guy in the country if you want an, a used vintage M car, you really either take your chances in the open market like this or you go see him. But if you go see him, you pay a premium. And I wonder, I wish I could have got him on the phone for the show, uh, would he have sold this car for more money than it than it tripped here on BAT? And I kind of, I just, based on what I've seen, I think he could have. Um, I think your number or my number would have been closer to what Eric would have gotten. And that at $72,000, I'd say the car was well bought. And uh, and I don't fault the seller for putting it on BAT. I think that was the right move. But if you know Eric Keller, if you're aware of Enthusiast Auto, they bring a premium for the best examples. This certainly looked like a car he would have had a very easy time representing and selling and i think he might have got more money for it but that's a really niche really nerdy really obscure take um i don't know how many people out there would agree with me besides eric himself but anyway that's my feeling that's my explanation for out kicking my coverage jp congratulations on the win i missed it by twenty three thousand. <laughs> yeah know? i don't know yeah look i think these cars are just uh, this is a car that's going to be susceptible to a market shift um not yeah that might be fair amount of people are after this. I mean, Porsches, we keep talking about Porsches and generally they're, they're more insulated. They're, uh, they're, you know, less elastic, uh, in pricing. Uh, it, it just doesn't seem to matter what a Porsche goes for. People will, will spend all the money, but everything else is really seems to be taking a hit. Um, so I don't know, uh, th this car, would it have done better on, uh, somebody selling for the seller uh, on a special, I mean, how, what would the, <sighs> what would the buyer premium or seller premium have been had that Good question. consigned it? You know, that probably would have been 10,000 um, bucks. Five, 5%, you know. 7% is yeah. standard, right? You know, so, like that. so yeah, you're right. BAT, you're right. At least the, the, the buyer is paying that premium and not the seller. So I think generally, even though we, I personally have had some poor luck on BAT recently, I had my car failed to sell, uh, it, you know, the car I had definitely has taken a, a, a hit. Uh, due that's to not market. that's not that's not fair to say to bring a trailer because it wasn't really a car. It was a Miami banana hammock. <laughs> well, it was a yellow. That was a, whole... that, that was a yellow bikini. That was a speedo. It's true. And it was it was a sexy, sexy uh, little bikini as well. Um <laughs> Pointy hat cabriophobes, I'm sure, uh, were the problem. Uh, but look, <laughs> watch a previous episode. You'll know what we're talking about. Oh, I, my God. I, you know, yeah, my particular car, certainly more susceptible, I think, to uh, the market softening than even this car. Because, I mean, still, what, what was the price? What did this thing go for? 70 what? 72500 That's still Stole a it. lot of money for a... For an M6, Man. these just aren't as strong as like M3s. I mean, all or the M5s. M cars or, M or yeah. M5s. I mean, all the yeah. M cars do well, but nothing comes close to an M3, you know, E30 M3 or, you know, the M5. Uh, but yeah, even, it's yeah, true. So That's fair. These but I, I still, I'm surprised this car wasn't closer to six figures based on the condition and the miles. Um, and even maybe you could say the interior is rare. Conversely, you could say maybe that interior held it back because it's a brown dash, and beige carpets, and beige seats. You know, if this car had an all-black interior, would it have brought eighty grand? Maybe. 
Yeah. I mean, you compare this car to what else is there that you would get that would be similar for 70 something thousand dollars. I mean, if you're yeah. looking 911 money. Do, do, do you remember when we were at Works Reunion, we went in, we ran into that um, part of the nerd herd, that guy named Mike who makes the hats. Yes. He he recently, when you and I were on sabbatical at the end of last year, he sold his E36 and he was really bummed because he wanted to submit it for us to review the car. Mm. Um, and in conversation at works while we were talking to him, um, he was talking about how the BMW community will eat its young if they disagree with them. You know, mm. so, you know, could this car have the wrong interior? Thus, nobody that collects BMWs wanted it because it's got a brown dashboard that according to Mike, according to the argument I'm trying to make, could possibly have been the reason why this car was held back, because I really think that's a soft result, even in a softening market, even with an elastic model like an M, all really strong points. But as finicky as we know the Porsche community to be, the Ferrari and the BMW community could laugh at how lack of finicky the Porsche community is, because they're the queens of finicky. Yeah. Well, someone got a great car, uh, apparently at a good price. Uh, to me, I think so. Yeah, I to think me, so. that number uh, just, I mean, I would never pay that much for this car. And I love this car. Don't get me wrong. I think no. this car is fantastic. But in my brain, uh, you know, and I'm out of touch and uh, it's kind of stuck in a different era. This car just, this is a thirty or $40,000 car to me. Like tops, like most <laughs> ever. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. I guess just it's an inflationary world and that's just- Old information, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I think 70,000 is the new, you know, 40,000. Yeah. You know, so. 59 grand in 1987, John, yeah. and 72,000 today. I mean, yeah, it doesn't even, that's not even sticker when you take inflation into account. Yeah, in real dollars, so, just know we're close. Yeah. Uh, right. What do you guys think of the result on this car? Is this something that you would pay 70 plus thousand? Should it have gotten six figures? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, we try to, you know, we try to reply to the comments. We try to go in there and uh, say, hey, yeah. and we've had some pretty good uh, discussions with some some people who have uh, who hate me, apparently. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm better than you. What are you going to do? I mean, that, that happens. That happens. Uh, I think people love your negative attitude. Who's negative? I don't know what you're talking about. You're wrong! Get those words!